Palisade Radio. We're continuing here with our Jekyll Island Conference hosted by Palisade Global. Sitting down with us is a new guest to the program. He was a speaker at the event. His name is Greg Orell, and he heads up the OCM Gold Fund. Greg, thanks so much for coming on and Great being a speaker. Great call. It's been terrific being here. Really have enjoyed the the experience and you know where we are, historic of um, Jekyll Island Hotel, you know, founding of the you know, central bank of the Federal Reserve. So yeah, it's been you know, you know, first time here, so it's really been a great experience. Yeah, I think for most people coming here unaware of the what happened, it's probably just a, a charming location. But when we got the talk last night from G. Edward Griffin, it was almost. Uh, a feeling inside when uh, thinking about what happened in the room all those years ago and what it's led to now. Yeah, you could you could you could almost feel back in that time, and um, it was one of those kind of eerie experiences being in that same room and thinking, oh, this is where they all got together to basically collude <laughs> to uh, you know control the you know the global wealth. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about uh, the OCM fund and what you spoke about at the conference here yesterday. Your fund is uh, at this point, I think, 99% deployed into the resource sector. And um, can you talk first a little bit about which portion of the resource sector you've decided to deploy capital into? What's your deepest value area right now? Well, you know, so you know, first off, we start off with the premise that um, you know our gold thesis which is that um, gold is the preeminent form of money and that uh, still, you know, we're still to see the, you know, radical monetary measures, you know, play out. And when that does, you know, we still believe that you know, there's going to be a shift in capital flows back into gold and that gold is really only in a correction period that, you know, having gone from, you know, the three, Basically, 300 to the 1900, and then down to 1,030 is similar to gold going from, you know, 35 dollars, you know, then having that move in the 70s up to 190, um, down to 103 before it went to um, over 800, and you know what that is? It's the debasement of currency that takes place, and it happens in factors of 10. And you don't add fives to currencies when they're debasing them. You know, everything happens. In you add zeros, and that's what we're doing here. And so, with the um, you know currency debasement that's been ongoing, with you know, global debt uh, going up exponentially, where we are right now is we're in a sweet spot for you know investing into the gold sector for investors because you know, the rest of the money is all focused on you know being in the broad market because of the kind of the unrelenting march that's been going on because of central bank policies of actually even investing in equities. I mean, in Switzerland, the Bank of Japan investing in equities. But, you know, so, you know, they want to start to shrink the balance sheet. You know, there is going to be some repercussions there. Uh, you know, we've had the Trump uh, rally and, you know, part of that's a relief rally on regulations and targeting industries. And some of it, uh, you know, people feel, okay, geez, we're, you know, we're not going to be smothered. And so, you know, that creates an opportunity for, um, you know, right now where you know, everybody's looking the other way to invest, especially in um, exploration companies. We do a broad portfolio, uh, but we like, we believe early stage companies is where the best value creation is. And so right now we're in, you know, from, you know, major producers, large caps, royalty companies all the way down to micro cap exploration companies. But you know, I think the real sweet spot is junior producers that have you know, a uh, high exploration upside. And so you have cash flow. They don't necessarily need to go into the equity markets, but they can uh, you know, have big value creation through the drill bit. Yep. So. Well, speaking of the, the bull market in the 70s, I remember in your presentation you lined up uh, what that bull market looked like going to 190, back to 105, and then up to 800, and you matched it to where we are today, and it was eerie how similar the, uh, the charts looked in terms of time and price movement. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, well, the timing is off a little bit. I mean, it's elongated a bit more, but the percentage move is the same. Yeah. And that's what's going on here. Yeah. And so... 
So in terms of the fund, I don't know if you're uh, allowed to. Well, I guess all the names are disclosed that you're that you have owned. Yeah, we're a public. You know, the OCM Gold Fund is a public mutual fund, yeah. and so you know we, you know, all of our holdings get out there, as, you know, on a quarterly basis. So what are your, what are the two or three biggest holdings that you currently have in the fund? Well, our top you know, two positions are you know positions that we've had for a long time, um, Rand Gold and Igneco Eagle, which have appreciated, um, you know, we've ran gold position for us is up over a thousand percent. You know, the, you know, the Igneco Eagle position is up you know, like six or seven hundred percent. And, you know, just, we ride our winners and um, then we'll, our sell discipline is when uh, things change or when, you know, management uh, says something and does something different or their value destroyers. And, you know, Mark Bristow has done a terrific job. Um, but that being said, um, you know, we also, our position in the royalty companies, um, where, you know, we've had big gains there, you know, I think, you know, I'm sensing, you know, moving that money further down the food chain at here, it makes sense. And so, um, you know, there's, I think there's, fully valued at this juncture versus other sectors of the market yeah. on, on the large cap royalty names. Well, let's talk uh, about the move that started in January of last year. And we had what was a really strong rally. Almost anybody that was in the gold sector would have made a lot of money in eight months. A bit of frustration is set in now because we're uh, 12, 13, 14 months into uh, a sideways downward pattern. When do you expect for us to go into the next leg of the bull, bull market here? Um, you know, I think where we, we are right this minute is we're constrained because of the broad market rally and it's sucking all the money up. And so uh, we don't see defensive posturing. It's the same money that's in the group. You know, if a stock goes up, uh, you, you're seeing selling and, um, you know, maybe it's going into, an, you know, another company that's, that the market is chasing, but it's you know, the pool of capital in the sector is not growing right now. And that's what we need in order to broaden out the move. And that'll happen if, you know, there's a couple of things that'll ha happen is that if you start to see, you know, the market go down uh, in a meaningful manner, you'll see defensive money, or if there's inflationary expectations uh, that start to increase, and if that happens, then the you know, financial assets will come under pressure. We're, as I said before, we're going to see collateral damage at some point from the Federal Reserve's you know, extreme monetary policies. You know, everybody wants to believe that you know, the central bankers around the world have navigated you know, the 2008 financial crisis you know, successfully to port, but I don't believe that at all. I still say it's playing out. And so you know, when the next you know, moment happens of you know, the emperor has no clothes, uh, our crisis in confidence in central banking, then you're going to get a, uh, you know, a significant flow of capital into this sector. And that'll be the move that you know, as I said, you know, we're still mirroring the 70s. I can see gold making that move to stabilizing 3,500 to 4,000. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but you know, if you were you know, sitting there at $35 gold in the early 70s and said it was going to 800, that would sound crazy. And I can remember you know, first getting into the business, you know, and Prechter said you know, that the Dow was going to 3,000. We, oh, he's crazy, you know, and yeah. so, um, and then it went up uh, to a couple thousand and 2,500 and, you know, before it crashed and then 87 and then went uh, you know, yeah. higher. Well, exciting time. Such a beautiful backdrop and place that we are here. Um, thank you so much for coming down and speaking at the event. And hopefully we get you back here for this when we do it next year. Oh, Colin is great. It was uh, enjoyed being around everybody that was here. So it was terrific. Thanks, so. Greg. All right. Thanks, Colin. Think you understand the junior mining sector and you think that the participants in the mining sector junior mining sector are good people and kind people hit the bid how violent that term 
could be. It actually could be quite violent. Uh, it could be a rip your face off uh, uranium rally. And the world is always going to need raw material. It's going to need copper and gold and nickel and so forth. Totally destabilized. Hey, hey, troll, did you hear what's going on in Yemen?